Good morning, it's Anne Murphy here from Domesplicity. How are you? Just, um, the TV was blaring, so I quickly just turned it down and made myself a coffee and just getting the camera lined up and making sure I'm all good to go. <clears throat> I'm just going to check in the group to see if I'm up the right way and I'm coming in loud and clear. Everything looks good to go. I'll just give everyone a couple of minutes just to jump on. And we'll be set to go. I'm so excited about today's topic, ladies. It seems like um, ages since I've been um, live in the group. I've been busy working and um, busy with the kids and everything. And I was so keen to get my um, laundry routine um, posted in some way for you. I've taken heaps of photos, but I just never got around to posting it. So that's still coming as well. So I hope you've um, learnt to love your laundry a bit more. But um, when when um, you're ready to go, I had to laugh. I just got ready um, to come on live and I um, put some perfume on. I'm thinking, hang on a minute, no one's going to smell me. But then it's just like I'm catching up with um, good friends for coffee when I pop in here into the group and and have a chat. So I've got my coffee and um, ready to go. So if you're um, new to the group, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Anne Murphy from Domesplicity and Domesplicity is a place to call home. Home standing for homemaking, organising, making do education and I help people to create that um, ideal home life, an organised home life, an abundant home life and I've been doing that for 10 years at domesplicity.com. If, um, if you're live just say hi, if you're um, catching the replay just type hashtag replay so I know that you've seen it and if you've got any questions at all just um, type them in and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So today's topic um, keeping in with this fortnight's theme of M is for money I want to um, talk about how to live a rich life or how to have a rich life now I looked up the definition of rich and there's two um, two definitions of rich one is um, having abundant possessions especially material wealth and when I was growing up uh, the definition of rich to me was people like movie stars, rock stars, um, you know, the tech entrepreneurs now, your Bill Gates, your um, Mark Zuckerbergs, those kind of people. The other definition that I have of rich is existing in plentiful quantities, abundant. So you could refer to rich colours, a rich chocolate dessert. Or, as I like to um, refer to, um, what have I written? Living with a rich mindset because you have everything you need. And that's the type of rich that I want to talk to you about today. Now, um, I've spoken about it many times in the group before, about um, the difference between wants and needs. Hi, Latalia. Thank you. Um, nice to see you here live. I'm so glad that you could make it. I know you're on the other side of the world. It's lovely to see you. Um, so when I talk about wants, <clears throat> or when I talk about needs, needs are your basic um, human needs. So things like food, clothing and shelter. Um, and they're what we as humans need um, to live, um, to live really. Wants are things, other things, things that we want. Might be a new dress, new car, new house, um, everything new that you see. So they're wants. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having wants. We all like new things. We all like lovely, pretty things. We all like new outfits. So there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to money, making sure that you have those um, needs covered first is, is paramount. So unless you're... Um, Unless you're one of these rich um, people, like I mentioned before, those wants, you know, you can just buy whenever you want. But you can have all those things if you just change the way you think about money. 
So that's what I'm going to be um, talking about today. So I wanted to go back um, a little bit um, for, to when I was growing up. And this is how I guess I was conditioned and how I believe that I do live a rich life is because um, in my mind, I don't think my parents were rich by any means. I don't believe my grandparents were rich, but they they had such rich lives. Um, my father was a bus driver. My mother never went out to work, but she um, took in babysitting. She did um, home sewing for people. She cooked for um, people in the neighborhood. She took in ironing and washing and doing laundry, things like that. So in my mind, rich people were movie stars and rock stars. But um, at the time, I didn't even have really an opinion of what um, wealth was. I never had any idea about how much money my parents earned, but I had everything I needed. And like, I'm talking wonderful food. You know, my my parents were European, so my father really enjoyed um, a lot of food from his home country. So he made sure that he bought it. Um, we all, we played sport for so many years and we went on um, interstate and interstate trips, you know, catching flights, having the best sporting equipment and um, sneakers and um, uniforms and fees and things like that. We never went without, we always um, got what we wanted. Uh, but if, if I think back, I don't believe that they, they had the big income to cover all of that, but it's, it's what they did with their money and how they managed it. Same as my grandparents, they were um, dairy farmers and they sold their dairy farm and they retired to the Sunshine Coast. Now, my mother, my grandmother was um, fully self-sufficient. She grew all her own fruit and vegetables. She had a beautiful flower garden. Um, they never went overseas. They didn't want to go overseas. So, you know, why should they have that um, idea as to wanting to go overseas? But they went on a couple of holidays. They just loved their home life. They never they never wanted for anything. They just always had everything that they needed and, and they were happy with that. So <laughs> my parents never had a new car, but they always had a car that worked. They kept it well maintained. I think they had um, three cars in all the time that um, they were married. Um, they had their house paid off when um, I was in high school. Like you know, I never knew anything about their financial situation, but I just overheard a conversation one time when I was at high school and they said, well, we've done it. We've paid the house off. So that was that was a big thing. But they bought that in 1963. <clears throat> and um, the um, dollars, the currency that we used here in Australia back then was pounds. And I remember it was about four thousand pounds for the house. So they took probably about 15 years to pay it off and that would have been you know a really big deal but my mum was just such a good um, saver and a good budgeter and you know she used to sew a lot of our own clothes and um, shop wisely so and always paid the bills on time there was never any arguments about money that I can remember <clears throat> in my late teens I um, started working and having that upbringing where you know always make sure that you had your basic needs covered your food your uh, rent or mortgage and your clothing covered um, stuck with me. So um, that was about the early 80s. And I guess um, I followed a trend that was when op shopping just kind of became really popular. But I can remember back then when you went to a secondhand store, it was true vintage um, clothing. That's all you got there. There was some beautiful dresses from the 50s and really um, nice pointy toed shoes and vintage jewellery and I kind of went down that path I um, went through a I don't know a punk mod stage I suppose and used to dress in vintage clothing um, in my late teens um, when I went out but now op shopping has become a really um, viable source for clothes you know I've got beautiful clothes brand new clothes from secondhand shops i got a ralph Lauren skirt from uh for six dollars a ralph Lauren denim skirt for six dollars once so um i think this no not this top but um other tops you know brand new three dollars some um camo type um cargo pants for my son to go on camp 50 cents you know 
there's absolutely nothing wrong with um, secondhand clothing so I guess I had that mindset about buying um, things secondhand first from a very young age as well um, I always taught to save so once I paid my um, paid for my needs then I, I would save and you know I didn't really want for much much else I guess in my early 20s you know I started going out a lot more and partying but you know we'd always have to make sure we had a cab fare cab fare to come home uh, when we went out into the city so we always put that away but we always had to have money for alcohol but we always had our rent and food and um, bills paid on time too so but always kind of made sure that we had enough money uh, for going out so um, takes me into my 30s you know I lived on my own I, I really loved living on my own I traveled I used to travel with my mum and my sister and we'd go everywhere and always had enough money for um, an abundant life and you could say that I was living a rich life you know I wasn't a movie star or a rock star but I just had had so much abundance you know I just had everything that I needed whatever I wanted I just had you know and I didn't want for much you know like I wasn't sort of chasing material possessions to show that I was wealthy I was just had this mindset that I, I was wealthy in everything that I needed um, hit my mid 30s and then I met my ex-husband and eventually married him and married all his debts he came from the complete opposite where he um, was an only child and got everything he wanted he believed that having these material possessions somehow made him feel more important or more special he didn't learn to uh, care for anything or like to take care of these possessions as soon as it broke he'd get a new one his parents spoiled him and then they would just buy a new one for him whatever that was I think he's had I think in the first um, 10 years of his life he had something like 16 cars you know he'd bump it and then you know say oh that one's broken I need to to get another one you know he, he wouldn't set money aside for insurance to cover the um, the cost of repairs for the car um, this is isn't a bagging session about my ex-husband although I could do that but uh, I'm just trying to show you the difference and it makes me shake my head as to why I you know what what I found um, appealing in him but he also um, went into debt whatever he wanted he wanted a a brand new um, dirt bike and I don't know why I, I said yes I think you know I grew up um, I was in fear in, in in this relationship and I grew to feel that if I didn't say yes then what were the consequences you know he never hit me but he was always so violent in his temper and he just really acted like a two-year-old if he didn't get his way and I guess that just came from his upbringing that he'd stamp his feet long enough until his parents gave in to him and then he would you know get whatever that was he got three new motor you know brand new motorbikes which were fifteen thousand dollars and we had to go into debt for them and um he dropped it and then it became scratched so he didn't like that anymore it was all taped up with duct tape and you know he won a new one and that's how we lived um fortunately i still had that um abundant money mindset where i made sure that the bills were covered you know i went without well i didn't feel like i went without but you know i just made sure that the kids were um well looked after and i cut costs in in lots of various ways and eventually it took its toll and to cut a long story short uh, we split up three months later my um, dear mother passed away so i did receive an inheritance i was able to pay him out and pay off all those debts that he had incurred and um, start from scratch again and continue in that um, that frame of mind that I've had all my life <coughs> excuse me I just need a sip of my coffee I hope you've got a cup of coffee and I should have made a cake and had um, cake to share with everybody so that's um, what happened before um, I received any money of course you know there was I was here in the house still paying the mortgage still paying for all the bills the kids had just started school I remember the first day of school for my daughter I um, 
I didn't have any money for school books. And, you know, you're all excited about, you know, your kids starting school and, you know, you want to get them the book list, the full book list. And I just didn't have any money for that. I didn't feel down about it. I just said, well, I wonder what I could do. I didn't know anything about charities or, you know, asking for people for um, support. So I just said to the school, look, I'm really sorry that I just um, haven't got around to getting my daughter's school books. You know, she's in year prep, you know, what? What did she need? A few colouring pencils and um, crayons. And they said, don't worry. You know, we've got a special pack for people who um, aren't able to uh, supply your children with school books on their first day. So don't worry about it. And then you can just uh, buy the things as she needs. And I went, oh, that's really good. And I was super grateful, so super grateful that um, I didn't even know about that. So I was really lucky to um, have that. I still kept going, you know, I still kept being positive about the money. I still kept thinking, you know, we've still got a roof over our head. We've still got um, clothes on our back. The bills are still being paid. You know, I might have only had, uh, I don't know why this volume is going up on my phone. Um, we're uh, still... Uh, like I might have had only twenty dollars left for um, groceries some weeks, and you know, having a well-stocked pantry, I was able to make things like pancakes or fritters. Um, the children still had milk, <coughs> bread for sandwiches, fruit for school. I could make some cookies, and um, you know, whether they had a sandwich and and fruit for. Um, dinner that night that was okay or a bowl of cereal we were still being fed and I just never worried I knew that you know things would be okay the money would come in and we'd be okay so and we were and I've still still live um, to this day like that that a lot of people think that you know they have this mindset about money that it's a bad thing um, you know there's so many little sayings that uh, I think more so my grandmother would say things like money is the root of all evil, you know, money causes problems in families and that kind of thing, where I actually think, you know, it's it's just an energy source. It's just something that flows in and out of your life and there's such an abundance of it in the world. Um, when you've got that right mindset about money and you start to um, have a, a positive mindset, like showing gratitude, like we do here in the group every every night at nine o'clock, when you become grateful for your situation, you're positive and you attract more of what you're positive about. So when you're grateful for the roof over your head, grateful for the clothes on your back, grateful for that bargain that you got on your kids' new school shoes, show gratitude, write it in a journal, um, meditate about it, be continuously have that in your uh, thought process all the time, you'll attract more of the same. And I'm not saying that, um, okay, well, I've got this positive mindset now. I've got a $300 rates bill to pay. I'm just going to, I've just seen on um, Facebook or Instagram, someone's just bought, I'm going to use the uh, Kmart pie maker as an example, but you could just insert anything in here. On social media, people are so overwhelmed with the, f the fact that whatever they see that someone's using or they've how those people have, set their pantry up or um, whatever the new device is, that's going to make them feel better and it's going to make them feel good about themselves. But I've just got to take $25 or $50 out of the rates bill money so I can go and pay for it. You know, it's, it's about not worrying about what other people have. It's about making sure, like, and I'm talking about this, lots of people in the group who do... Um, uh, they know what I'm talking about when it comes to having an abundant life and a rich lifestyle. You know who you are. You cut back in all of these other areas of your life, but you don't look at it as cutting back. You look at it as being able to provide for the basic needs in your life and be grateful for them. And then those other things will come. Being positive. Say something like, well... You know, oh, I've just seen that Kmart pie maker um, someone's using and they've made so many recipes. That's really great. You know, I think that will be something that will really help my family. But I've got the 
Rate spell due today. I've got to make sure that Susie's got um, the $15 for her school trip. Um, we've got the groceries to do this week and I've got to put um, $20 away for our trip to the Gold Coast in September. I'll look at the budget next week and then I'll get it. You know, I'm grateful for to have all this money to pay for all my bills and be in this position and I know that I'll be able to get that Kmart um, pie maker in due time. You know, expressing gratitude, being happy with what you've got, feel like I don't need the pie maker now. I've got a muffin tin. I can make some pies in the muffin tin. You know, I can get by because I have um, I have all the money that I need. And when I'm um, when I've got a bit extra, I'm going to go and buy that pie maker instead of going. I need that pie maker. Wow, everyone else has got it. Have you seen the Kmart at, um, I don't know, Borkham Hills is all all um, sold out. Where can I get one? Where can I get one? You know, forget about being a FOMO. Be a JOMO. A FOMO is the fear of missing out. You know, it's not doing you any favours. Be a JOMO. Enjoy the joy of missing out. Enjoy this uh, liberating feeling that you don't have to follow what everybody else is doing to feel good about yourself. Go back to basics. Be be grateful for those things that um, that you're providing providing for your family. The safe house, the the safe and clean and tidy house, the the warm house in the winter and the cool house in the summer, the roof over your head when it's raining. You know those three things: food, clothing, and shelter are denied to many. You know I can't stress enough how those um, fundamentals in life are denied to so many people, so many humans in the world. People are starving. People's houses are being bombed up. You know, they don't have clothes to wear. They don't have food. They don't have clean drinking water. You know, do you think about every time you turn the tap on, how you have access to clean, drinkable, running water, a hot water to have a shower? You know, all of these little things that... Um, may not seem like big things but they are they are big things to people when uh you should be grateful for them because there's so many people in the world that, that don't have those things and to think about that you've got to go and run to um came out to buy the latest whatever when you've got bills to pay when you've got a budget that you've you know you you need to be strict with so that you can have an abundant life you can buy whatever you like whenever you like it will all come to you, you know, buy second hand, get stuff for free. I, I've shared videos before about how I decked out my dining and living room um, for free with beautiful furniture, a nice modern um, lounge suite for free, dining, a modern dining suite for free, um, lots of things. I'm not proud to, uh, we just got an outdoor setting. Um, it's not officially an outdoor setting, but a dining setting for our back back um, space under the pergola uh, it's a wonderful solid um, piece of furniture our next door neighbors just said did we want it and we've been looking for one it was free you know would I go out and pay sixteen hundred dollars from a furniture store because I saw someone else um, someone else's styled picture on um, Instagram that looks so wonderful and pretty I'm all about practical it's a beautiful setting solid we can sit out there and have our barbecues and it's a functioning piece. And I've got $1,600 in my pocket that I can use to go overseas. You know, overseas travel may not be to everyone's liking, but it's just something that, that I like to do. I, I've travelled a lot before I had my children, and I want to give them experiences too. I also made a promise uh, when I had children because my parents um, gave us a two-week holiday every single year of my life. We took two weeks off and we went to the beach every single year, Dad took the time off work I don't he worked many Christmases and public holidays I suppose to get more money <clears throat> but I promised that I would give the same to my children because it just gave me such fond memories and I think there was just one year um, when my oldest dog the one that we lost last July was the only time that we didn't go away because they were just we always travel with our dogs they were just too old um, to travel and to be away too far from home 
so that was the only year but we always go away every year i've taken them since they were babies we've gone to the beach whether it was for a weekend um, whether my ex was working or not i went on my own and i preferred it that way anyway because he wasn't much of a beach person and um, his idea of a holiday was just going to um, all those fun parks when he was growing up so um, he had to be busy and um, always occupied where my kids can find um, fun in the sun and, and in the in the beach so that was good so um, okay I've spoken about that I'm a bit, I hope I'm not rambling too much but I'm just trying to to tell you um, or to explain to you you know how I can manage to um, live now I don't work <clears throat> full-time I work from home <coughs> I've got um, a couple of different businesses and um, I earn a adequate income from from those to uh, the money that I get goes back into the business and it pays for um, different subscriptions that I, I pay for for email subscriptions and um, internet uh, usage and all of the other things you know having a domain name the domuspecity.com so it all goes back in there but I also have you know forty dollars here sixty dollars there to go out um, and get my nails done and um, you know maybe lunch with the girls whatever these little things are because I do have this positive mindset about money so um, okay I'm just going through the notes so one of the things um, that my I remember my dad always telling me was about um, some of these uh, myths I guess about um, have, how to have more money and one of them was um, you have to work hard to have money and my poor um, dear old dad he was a hard worker like I said he always um, worked Christmas and weekends you know all the the shifts that nobody wanted to earn more money and um, I guess it got him in the end because he passed away at 59 from pancreatic cancer so whether that was from the stress of being a bus driver all those years and you know things another myth I guess is um, one that I mentioned earlier my grandmother used to say money is the root of all evil now when you turn that around um, it's actually not the root of all evil we have this um, sometimes a negative uh, view on money that you know it causes problems with uh, people and divorce and um, you know look at movie stars when they split up and they they have um, you know they have to pay all this um, these um, oh, alimony or <clears throat> I can't think of the word to their exes and you know it causes all these problems <coughs> but when you start to look at it from a positive aspect you can see that money is actually good money does good things in the world um, it helps people so when you make a donation of, of money you know you're donating to an organization that's going to help people um, it, it pays for your basic needs you know if you didn't have the money to pay for your mortgage or rent or food or clothing you know there's not you know what else would you do um, where would you get how would you pay for those things so money is good it does pay for for those basic needs it pays for family holidays it pays for special treats for movie nights you know we can buy a, a three dollar um four dollar box of ice, home brand ice creams i can make a big bowl of popcorn from a three dollar bag of popping kernels and a 90 cent bottle of lemonade and you know what's that five dollars and sit in the comfort of our own home and watch watch one of the latest movies um on our foxtel subscription we don't have to go out and pay 50 50 dollars to go to the the cinema for that same experience um it pays for special treats for you it pays for your hobbies you know people who like to sew or read or craft or um stamp collect or whatever so Money is good. When you start believing that money is um, is evil and it causes problems, um, that's when you'll start to have all these negative beliefs about money 
and you will actually have less so like I've said before when you start to, to be positive about your life and and show um, gratitude for what you have you'll attract more and if you haven't heard of the law of attraction this is basically the fundamentals of the law of attraction attraction the more of what you um, you wish for you will attract so if you start to say I never have any money well guess what you'll never have any money if you say I have all the money that I need you'll always have all the money that you need and that's what I did I always had the money that I needed I was positive about it I showed gratitude and I've never been homeless I've never been without a place to live I've had great clothes I've had new cars secondhand cars um, overseas holidays I've had everything that I needed so these um, these myths about money that are stopping you from moving forward and having um, a living a more rich and abundant life are what's called limiting beliefs and there is a process that you can use to um, shift those limiting beliefs about money relationships your health all aspects of life um, I actually uh, when I started my business officially back in 2017 I tried a few different things and I thought oh, this isn't working why aren't I successful in my business you know what's wrong with my business why why isn't this working you know all these limiting beliefs you know I'm never going to succeed in business and these the same st seven step process that I'm going to share with you today is exactly what I use to move forward now my business is booming I'm getting you know it seems like overnight I got 11,000 um, followers on my Instagram account which isn't about the numbers but it, as far as business goes you know I'm able to help more people and uh, and share my information so that was a really great thing I was grateful for it I'm positive about it and that all came from um, working out what these limiting beliefs were turning them into an opposite statement and uh, being positive about it I journal every night so I created a seven uh, a workbook with these seven steps in it it's just a little process that you go through you can do it in like 10 15 minutes a day on all of your limiting beliefs about you know if you feel overweight you know I can't lose weight I can't um, I can't seem to get ahead you know all of these limiting beliefs that might be holding you back in all of areas of your life you you know my house is always messy I'm so disorganized whatever it is and I've called the ebook change your mind about money and this seven simple seven step process um, I'm going to drop the link to it in um, this Facebook live when I get finished and I want you to have it I want you to start um, you know having this rich abundant um, lifestyle just by changing your mind about what you think about money and um, prosper and have everything that you need so like I've said um, to instill these beliefs to make these beliefs become part of your new normal um, instead of thinking I don't have um, enough money I can't afford that practice gratitude daily and we do that here in the group practice gratitude for what you do have and you'll attract more it's just the balance of nature and it works every single time um, always look for free or second hand for your basic needs there's nothing shameful about second hand you're not poor you're actually helping the environment you're um, saving the money in uh, saving spending the money in your own life uh, you know if it's clothes just wash them you know I think there's still a stigma about second hand um, items and you know I just can't understand why people why you don't get second hand you know people say oh it's still cheaper at Kmart you know I got um, six things for thirty dollars from Kmart um, uh, it may not be as good quality but when you can get six things for for three dollars from the second hand shop you know you may not get everything that you want every single time but they might be um, five or ten years older and ten years older even the clothes were um, hi Carla oh thank you yes they are they really are and it works it it's helped me so much in my life you know 
Um, just another example about how using this um, power of positivity helped me. My ex, if I let him, would still hound me till the day I died. He tries, but I changed my mindset about how I think of him and what I think of him. He has no thought in my mind. If I feel like there's going to be a confrontation, I actually say it out loud sometimes. Um, I'm strong. I'm powerful. I don't let treat. I don't let people treat me bad anymore. Um, you know, I'm worthy of being spoken to nicely. Whatever I say these things out loud, because you know I can feel something coming on. You know, a confrontation with him. There's no confrontation. There's no nothing. You know, I I feel like I've taken the power back just by by positive thinking so you know it really does work you look at tennis players look at roger federer he's got that game one on the tennis court before he's even played a single shot you know it's all up in his mind you know he's a winner he's going to win he's, he imagines imagines himself holding the trophy up in the air before he's even left the locker room and guess what he does it he may not do it every time but he's going to win the next one you know that's there is a lot a lot to um, learn from um, positive thinking so um, learn to change learn to turn those um, negative thoughts into positive ones always think about the opposite and stop being a FOMO fear of missing out and enjoy being a JOMO you know I go out of my way to be a JOMO I really enjoy um, missing out on all of these things it's just so liberating I go Oh, thank goodness I don't have to go and see the, the latest Captain Marvel movie because I can't stand it. Or thank goodness I don't have to go and buy that latest Harry Potter book because I didn't ever want to read the Harry Potter books. Um, thank goodness I don't have to go and see the latest range from Kmart because I have everything that I need. I have blankets that were crocheted from when I was a little girl into granny squares and they still work. It may not match the decor in my in my uh, living space but it works it keeps me warm you know that's I and mean, i'm grateful for that so i hope you've um enjoyed uh today's uh facebook live and if you have any questions at all about um some negative statements or beliefs that you might have share them in the group um share them in this facebook live or if you don't feel confident about um talking about them in the group you can always pm me i'm always um, willing to help you um i want to see you live a more organized life a more carefree life an abundant life one that's not stressful one that's just easy going and full of everything that um your heart desires i really do so um i'll drop that link for this uh workbook how to change um change your mind about money Go through the process. I still use these seven steps all the time because another issue might rise. You know, like teenage daughters, you know, I, I did some a lot of work on that, on how to change how I believe about uh, what I believe about the relationship I have with my teenage daughter. And it's wonderful. It's it's really good. Um, I don't feel so stressed about it as much anymore. And um, I'm really grateful for the relationship that we, we do have. So, um I've probably been rambling on a bit too long um, already today. So please um, have, a, have a look at the workbook and um, ask me any questions anytime. And I'm so glad that you could join me today. It was really great to catch up with you. And hopefully I'll catch up with you again soon and get back into this regular regular catch ups because I um, I love catching up with you. And you know if you're in Brisbane, you know I'm for, always up for a coffee. Um, so send me a shout out and we'll we'll catch up for a coffee sometime. See you later. Great to see you, everybody. Bye for now. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.